What if one morning, your phone's GPS stopped working? No maps, no timestamps, no flight routing, no banking sync. That's not science fiction, it's a real possibility. The US GPS system, once considered rock solid, is now being quietly challenged by China's Beidou. And the stakes aren't just about satellites, they're about global power, military dominance, and economic control. In this video, we reveal how this transformation is unfolding and why it could change everything. For decades, the U.S. owned global positioning system, GPS, has powered the world's navigation. Whether you're calling a rideshare, tracking a shipment, or sinking time across global banks, GPS has been the quiet force making everything run smoothly. Originally developed by the U.S. Department of Defense and opened to civilians in 2000, it became a free global utility, touching nearly every industry. But in 2025, that dominance is being seriously challenged by an unexpected rival, China's Beidou system. Beidou isn't just another navigation service. It's a comprehensive alternative that is now technically more advanced in several ways. Backed by 56 satellites compared to around 31 for GPS, Beidou offers a wider and more stable coverage network. It's also the only global navigation system operating across three orbital layers, geostationary, medium Earth, and inclined geosynchronous orbits. This multi-layer design gives it better precision and signal availability, especially in urban areas or regions with difficult terrain. What makes this even more impressive is the infrastructure on the ground. While GPS relies on just 11 ground control stations worldwide, Beidou is supported by over 120 command stations, enabling constant communication and rapid updates with its satellites. China has also invested heavily in building nearly 300 backup ground-based navigation stations, as well as fiber-optic networks to transmit precise timing signals. These networks are crucial in industries like finance and telecommunications, where even millisecond discrepancies can have major consequences. One of Beidou's most significant features is its use of eLoran, a modernized version of a long-range terrestrial navigation system. Unlike satellite signals, which are weak and can be blocked easily by interference, Eloran transmits stronger radio signals from the ground that are much harder to disrupt. This gives Beidou a layer of resilience that GPS currently lacks. Navigation systems like GPS and Beidou do more than tell us where we are. They guide airplanes, synchronize financial markets, route emergency services, and help control power grids. In short, they're the invisible foundation of the modern digital world. But what happens when that foundation can be disrupted or even manipulated? One of the biggest concerns today is the rise of jamming and spoofing, two methods used to interfere with satellite navigation systems. Jamming works by overwhelming a receiver with noise, essentially drowning out the satellite's weak signal. Spoofing, on the other hand, sends false data to trick a device into thinking it's somewhere it's not. Both methods are increasingly used around the world especially near sensitive regions. In the past few years, there's been a noticeable rise in GPS disruptions in places like Eastern Europe and the Middle East, where large-scale jamming has made aircraft and ships appear to vanish or jump across the map. These events have exposed how dependent the world has become on satellite-based navigation and how vulnerable that dependency really is. This is where Beidou's structure gives it a unique edge. Because it operates on three orbital layers, its coverage is harder to degrade with interference. Its ground-based backup systems, including fiber optic networks and eLoran transmitters, ensure that critical navigation and timing data can still be delivered even if satellites are disrupted. And since eLoran transmits signals at high power from ground-based stations, interfering with it requires significantly more effort than with satellite signals. Another aspect that raises concern is Beidou's ability to interact with GPS systems. Thanks to their interoperability agreement, both systems can be accessed by the same receivers. While this improves accuracy in civilian devices, it also means that Beidou-compatible systems can potentially simulate GPS signals with high precision. This opens the door to sophisticated forms of spoofing, where a device receives counterfeit signals that are indistinguishable from the real ones. Experts like Sean Gorman, founder of Zephyr, highlight that in certain scenarios, attempting to jam Beidou's high-power backup systems might even disrupt nearby GPS networks unintentionally. This creates a situation where the more China secures its own system, the more fragile others may become by comparison.
As Beidou matures technically, its influence is growing far beyond China's borders, and that expansion is anything but accidental. Through trade, infrastructure, and diplomacy, China is embedding its satellite navigation system into the foundations of the global economy. This effort isn't being sold as domination. It's packaged as development, modernization, and partnership. A key vehicle for this expansion is the Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, China's sprawling infrastructure program involving more than 140 countries. Across Asia, Africa, the Middle East, and even parts of Europe, China is building ports, rail lines, highways, and communication hubs. But along with steel and cement comes software, specifically Beidou. In many of these BRI partner countries, navigation systems installed in public works projects are defaulted to Beidou. Whether it's smart ports, automated trains, or digital ID networks, these systems are being calibrated to run on China's satellite signals. Some countries are already making strategic shifts. Pakistan and Saudi Arabia, for example, have adopted Beidou for some of their defense-related applications. This means sensitive systems, from radar to vehicle tracking, now rely on Chinese infrastructure. It also means that if those systems were to become dependent on Beidou-exclusive functionality, switching back to GPS would be expensive, difficult, and politically delicate. As Dana Goward, president of the Resilient Navigation and Timing Foundation, put it, Beidou gives China an on-off switch over nations that adopt it too deeply. If China wanted to restrict access, it theoretically could, with economic or diplomatic consequences that ripple far beyond the technology itself. Meanwhile, many Western countries are finding themselves caught in a slow response cycle. The United Kingdom, after losing access to the EU's Galileo system during Brexit, considered building its own global navigation constellation. But the projected costs, estimated in the billions of pounds, led the government to shift its focus to more regional and hybrid solutions, like atomic clocks, fiber-based timing, and quantum sensors. Japan and South Korea are working on enhancing regional satellite coverage, but neither can match the scope of Beidou. Globally, for satellite navigation systems dominate. GPS, US, Beidou, China, Galileo, EU, and GLONASS, Russia. Among these, Beidou is the fastest growing, not only in terms of satellite count, but also in adoption and infrastructure partnerships. In the end, this story isn't just about GPS or Beidou, it's about control. Control of signals, of infrastructure, of digital lifelines that keep the modern world running. While the West still leans on GPS as a default, China is already reshaping the playing field with a system designed for resilience, disruption, and dominance. We're witnessing the quiet emergence of a new kind of power, a satellite-driven web of influence where access to navigation is also access to autonomy. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.